Hey everyone, Tiger Tanaka here, and welcome back to another part of Pokemon Platinum. I've got a little bit of explaining to do. Um, as you'll notice, I kind of skipped a part, it seems. It seemed like I was supposed to explore the city before I challenged the gym, and I did, but a virus kind of attacked my computer and I lost some files, and unfortunately the city exploration was one of them. Luckily, it wasn't the gym battle, that would have really sucked. But, uh, I guess I can go ahead and quick explore the town, it won't go as in-depth, but... Basically, if you're ready to go to the gym right away, Dawn will be standing here, she would... Kinda hint to what you were supposed to do next, until after the gym battle where she flat out told you like she did in the last video. Um, in here. You talk to this lady here, she will massage your Pokémon. And depending on its personality, will give you a random accessory. Kinda useful, I guess, if you go for contests or if you have a Pokemon need to evolve by evolution. This clown here will flip a coin. If you call heads or tails correctly, he will give you a coin case, which you can use at this conveniently placed game corner right over here. And of course, the game corner has tons of prizes. Um, you can get some coins from one of these people, I don't remember who it was. I believe this person gives you the prizes. Oh no, you can buy coins here. Pretty convenient. Um, over to the right is where the prizes are. Um, this guy here though, he can tell you what kind of hidden power your Pokémon can have depending on its IVs. So if you have any Pokémon that can, well, if you want to teach your Pokémon Hidden Power, you can see what type it will be before you teach it to it. And there are tons of items here. Silk Scarf powers up the power of normal type moves. Wide Lens increases the accuracy of your moves. Zoom Lens increases the accuracy of a move that you use consecutively. Metronome powers up a move if it's used consecutively. And then there are TMs here. I'll have the whole list of TMs you can get here in the description, so you don't have to guess and check and buy them over and over again. Over here, we have Meteors, which can be used to change Deoxys into its various forms, Attack, Defense, Normal, and Speed. I don't know which Meteors do what. Um, in the basement of the department store here, you can buy the best Poffins you can possibly get in the game, but Beware, they're crazy expensive, they cost 6,400 Poké Dollars each. So if you can afford the cash, then go right ahead and do that. In this house, I believe... Yes it is, if you have an empty slot in your party, this guy will give you a free Porygon. And one last minor thing, before we continue on. Way up here was a rare candy. So now that we've got all that out of the way, let's go ahead and continue the story. Alright, so... Um... I forgot to heal, but it's a... Yeah, it's a Team Galactic Grunt battle. I shouldn't have to heal for this. So let's go ahead and get Dawn's Pokedex back. Of course I remember them. They're lame. At least the grunts are. Alright, since we don't have anything better to do, and the game requires us to do it. So yeah, generic Team Galactic battle. Let's see how frightening their Porloin and Stunkies are. Oh wait, let's get past these Zubats first. Um, Dawn will lead off with her Clefairy. Your Clefairy likes to use Cosmic Power a lot, which increases both Defense and Special Defense by one stage. It's good for sponging hits, but other than that, it's probably not going to do anything useful. It also has Metronome and Gravity, okay, that makes it so that opponents that are either Flying-type or have the Levitate ability can be hit with Ground-type attacks. And Anticipation makes it so that it warns the user of the ability Anticipation if the opponent has a super effective move on it, which I do, but it'd be more practical if you go for the stab Bubble Beam. 
Uh, Clary also has Sing, which can put the opponent to sleep. Not that useful in this situation, since Krogunk's gonna wind up dying this turn anyway. Um, I'm guessing Krogunk was gonna go for Revenge there, since it moved last. And Revenge doubles in power if you're hit before you attack, so... He's probably gonna go Cl for Clefairy there, and try to KO it. Um, unlike all the other trainers that you've tagged along with, though, um, Dawn does have multiple Pokémon. She has Clefairy and her starter, I believe. She may have one more. I could be wrong about that, but... In any case, let's just go ahead and beat these Galactic Grunts. She got Confuse Ray with Metronome there, not gonna matter whatsoever. It killed itself, but it's not that funny anymore, honestly. So let's see, and Stunky, I was right. Let's go ahead and hit this thing with bubbles, and yay, another pointless quick clock activation. It wasn't until recently I noticed how often I pointed that out. Where I said pointless quick clock activation was pointless, that's more of a catchphrase than anything else right now. Alright. And I have been doing non-stop talking for the past six and a half minutes because of all the explanations. Um, Faint. Faint makes it so I can bypass the move Protect. Um, I believe that is the only move that can do that in this gen. Same goes for Detect. Napoleon leveled up, very nice. No, it's not right because... Well, you just suck. So I guess it is right. Yeah, good luck with that. How about you catch your own for once? What exactly what were you gonna do with the Pokedex again? They never really explained that. We'll say you'll get yours and run like the grunts we are. Because they pretty much do. Which is kinda sad. Aren't you the one that said you were somewhere between good and hopeless the last time we mentioned your Pokedex? How would you be lost without it? And that is something that I never went over before- Oh, hello, looker. But yeah, um... To southwest of Heart Home City, there was an alternate route to get to Pas er, Veilstone City, which involved going to Pastoria City which basically would have made us get the fourth badge before the third badge. However, I will cover that later. Well, very soon, actually. It's that funny man from Jubilife. You insult me to my face? How very uncouth of you. Yeah. So what do you have to say, looker? Uh, look at Team Rocket, that's pretty much all they did. And in here, Looker will point out something very important that wasn't pointed out very obviously in Diamond and Pearl. Other than a key is needed to go on. Because that's obvious enough. This guy will point out the HM02 Fly. A very convenient HM, which will allow you to go to any city that you've already been to at the whim of... Well, at your whim, as long as you have a Flying-type Pokémon. So, let's go ahead and take it, and teach it to Stereo Hearts. Because this is not only going to give it a stab move, but it's going to be very convenient for travel purposes. Let's go ahead and teach it to Stereo Hearts now. Won't do very much damage, because Stereo Hearts is going to be more of a special attacker now, but... Whatever. Um... Even though I said Wish was going to be useful, I have healing items for, well, healing, so, yeah. So now that we're done with Team Galactic here, at least for the time being, let's go ahead and go south of Veilstone City after we actually heal up, because I still need to do that after the gym battle. Alright, I went ahead and put Charlie in the front. Now let's continue on and go south of Veilstone City into a new route. Um, I don't really care for interviews right now. 
Boot 214, right away we'll be interrupted by a psychic. Behind you! There's nothing behind me! I can see several tiles behind me. There's nothing there other than trees. And Chingling, how crappy. <laughs> Let's go on Flame Wheel. See, I haven't been able to record much other than Luigi's Quest in a couple of weeks now, so... At the time of recording this, I don't have any Platinum videos in reserve, so I am attempting to get back on my old schedule of being a few weeks of videos ahead of time. At least for my main LP. Because like I said before, ROM hacks are going to be more of the weekend review type of thing, and more live, I guess, than anything more recent recorded recently recorded when they're uploaded. At most, they'll be a week ahead of time instead of, I don't know how many weeks Platinum has been ahead of time up until this point. I'd be, I'd have one more video in reserve if it weren't for that virus, which I'm hoping to the gods that is gone now. Because if it's not, then I have a huge problem. Because, uh, that virus nearly wiped everything out I had on my computer. It was starting to delete stuff by the time I got it to stop at the very least, if not get rid of it. I lost the exploration of, uh, Balestone City, and I lost the very last video of Luigi's Quest, believe it or not. Luckily, in Super Mario World, you can redo the levels without really interrupting anything, so that's good to know. And, to be honest, it's probably a good thing that I have to redo Luigi's Quest last video, because I was very rushed, and the last video wound up being 40 minutes long. So, I would have had to pick a very awkward spot to split it up and find a way to upload that in a decent schedule. So, yeah, it's probably a better thing, because now I can very least upload what I have now, and then go from there. Let's go and pick these berries. The cherry berry, I believe these are citrus berries. Yes, they are. I believe these are chestos. And that one next to it might still be growing. No, it's fully grown. For some reason, I thought that looked like a flower. But anyway, over here, something kind of important is the Ruin Maniac Cave. Everyone calls me the Ruin Maniac, I don't care what they call me. I'll just keep on chipping away at the rock wall little by little. You know why? I'm a Ruin Maniac who is fascinated by the unknown. I know it's a little sum, but how about you and me have a race? You go and catch the unknown, I'll keep digging away. We'll have a race to see who can get done faster. And this is what I said earlier, this is what it applies about catching all the unknown. The more unknown you catch, the further this guy gets in his cave. And if you catch all 26 kinds of unknown, and ironically you can get the TM for dig here, if you catch all 26 different kinds of unknown, unknown, a little voice crack there, then you can get to the top half of the Slaceon runes, which will allow you to get some good items, and catch the final two forms of unknown, the exclamation point and the question mark. And if you get to a certain point in the Ruin Maniac Cave, I believe it's 12 or 13 different kinds of unknown, you can find the wild Pokemon Hippopotas, which you can't find anywhere else in the game if I remember correctly. So if you want a Hippopotas, which is actually a pretty decent ground type, it's, it's fairly bulky, gets a Sandstream ability, and hello Rhyhorn! Fun fact, it's Evolution Rhydon was the first Pokemon ever designed. But anyway, I'm getting way too off track here. Uh, Hippopotas has a sandstorm ability, which whips up a permanent sandstorm. And with that, it is very useful in sand teams, which goes without saying, or at least it should. I could have swore there was a hidden item in here. Maybe it got moved? I don't know. 
This is the Magmarizer, which if you give this to a Magmar and trade it, it will evolve into a Mag... Mortar. Almost forgot its name there. Man, this video is just full of explanations, isn't it? But yeah, once it evolves into Hippowdon, it is a very good physical or special wall. So if you want one and can deal with the sandstorm, then I say go for it. Uh, let's go out to Charlie, just for the super effective damage. God, I don't think I've talked for this long, non-stop, before. My throat's already starting to get sore, and I've only been recording for like 16 minutes. I mean, sure, I just recorded a battle too, but that shouldn't make much of a difference. It was only six minutes long. Oh boy. And I also start my job tomorrow, so that's even better. Uh, yes, I have full heals. Good. I was gonna flip out if I didn't. Yeah, first day of work in less than 24 hours as of recording this video, so... Wish me luck for that, well, I guess I'll have already worked by the time this is uploaded, so... Uh... What should I say about that? I don't know. Let's just use a chest berry here. I guess wish me luck from the past if you can! I don't know how that would work unless you can time travel. I am just rambling and rambling. Let's just kill this Bronzor. Oh man. Uh, Cranidos. I haven't seen one of these since we fought Rourke. Let's go out to Ivy. Our physical wall. And has a decently super. Er, Super effective, but I don't remember how much Cranidos away, so it might not do that much with Grass Knot still. Let's see. And it's an O- oh, oh, it was a crit, so it might not have even- Well, it had to have been a 2 at KO if it was a crit and killed in one hit, so... It doesn't really matter. Um, oh, this is where the hidden item was at. Ah, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and keep Ivy out there. Hey, you! Face me! And a Graveler. I guess that makes it so that you don't have to raise up a Geodude if you want one this late in the game, but... Honestly, you probably would already have a Graveler at this point, considering how much higher level you'd be than the wild Pokémon, so... Then you'd have Eevees on your Geodude slash Graveler anyway, so it would be better than having a... Newly caught wild Pokemon anyway, and Synthesis... Synthesis restores, uh... 50% of your total H or maximum HP. But it is affected by weather, so if it's in the sun and used... Then it'll restore 70% of your total health, but if it's sandstorm or rain, then it'll only heal 25% of your total health. So, another thing if you're thinking about going into the competitive field, and Porygon! I guess you didn't pick up the Porygon from that one guy in Veilstone City, you can go ahead and battle one here so you can get in your Pokedex. <clears throat> Man, my voice is getting really raspy now. So much explanations. There's so many explanations, I can't even think right now. Blag. I'm just so anxious about work and the virus and all that stuff. And yay, Shell Bell activated. Agility! You would have just been better off attacking me. I just killed a Porygon already. Come on! All right, we get it. Shell build. Blur, 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 blur. Jamal. And honestly, I have a rarer Pokemon than you do, so you can suck it. Gee, I wonder where this hidden item is—a Razor Fang. 
If you give that to a Sneasel and trade it, it will evolve into Weavile, a fast physical attacker. It's a Dark Ice type, and Hello Houndour, this is a Dark Fire type, which is a fast special attacker. It can be used as an effective sweeper, really. Especially since it gets nasty plot, that thing's in the sun, you better watch out if you're in a lower tier. And my throat is getting really, really sore, so I'm gonna have to stop recording here. Hopefully I'll be able to pick it up very soon, because I really don't want that Irish to strike again. I have to start making backups of everything right after I render everything out, so... Anyways, enough rambling. Next time on Pokemon Platinum, we'll be exploring the rest of this route. See you guys then.